Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to my Logic Pro 10 201 course. This series will be a blend of music composition, production, a little recording, and mixing and mastering. The song I'll be building in this course is an electronic or pop style track, so the only audio tracks I'll be working with are the vocals. Everything else will be software instruments and samplers. So as I said, I'll be building a song from scratch starting with just creating a rough arrangement in chords, recording a scratch vocal, then adding synthesizers and samplers, and I'll explain synthesis as I go, beat building and drum sampling, fleshing out the arrangement, recording vocals, understanding proper vocal recording technique with a microphone, editing and producing vocals, including vocal tuning with flex pitch, and then finally mixing and mastering the song. So with electronic music, I find that the line between production work and mixing work is heavily blurred, and much of the sound design and production that I do up front when writing and arranging the song will also be part of the mix process as well. Unlike when recording a band where the steps are pretty separate, you know, prepping and writing, recording, editing, mixing, and mastering, they're all sort of like these little compartmental steps. With electronic music, it's more there's more blend between these uh, these different steps. So I'll assume that you know some basics about Logic, like basic Logic operation, basic editing, MIDI recording, and the audio preferences and setting up your interface, etc. If not, go check out my short 101 course to first learn the basics and then come back to this course. Although I will do a bit of review in these first few videos on MIDI recording and using the Piano Roll Editor. Like I've done in the past, I'll make the session available for download at some point, so be on the lookout for that as well. Also, I'm using Logic 10.4.3 for this course. So as long as you're using 10.4 or higher, you'll have 99% of everything that I have. And even if you use like 10.2 or higher, you should still be able to work along just fine. One last thing I'll mention is that I'll only be using stock Logic plugins in this course. If I happen to use any third-party plugins, I'll make sure that they're free plugins and link to them in the video description. All right, so let's get into this. In this first video, I wanna take a moment to review how to set up software instruments, layering software instruments, and go over basic MIDI recording with a MIDI controller. All right, so I've got a blank Logic project here. Most of you already know that you can press Option Command N to create a new software instrument. One thing to remember when you when you create software instruments is that if you have this selected to default patch, it'll actually create an electric piano patch out here with some sends and some reverbs on it. I typically like to start from scratch, so I'll just choose empty channel strip. Now, another thing that you can do, let me just pull up an audio track to demonstrate, is that you can double click down here to create a, a new track, but this creates whatever type of track that you have selected. So if I want another instrument track, I simply select an instrument track and double click down here to create a new one. If I want another audio track, I make sure I have an audio track selected and double click to create a new one. So I don't want these audio tracks, so I'll just delete these, but I do want three software instrument tracks. On this first one, I'm gonna load up the EXS24 sampler and I'll load this up in stereo. And I'm just gonna choose a basic piano patch under acoustic pianos here and I'll just choose the grand piano patch. And if I arm this track and play a few notes, I should uh, be able to hear the output from the XS24. Another thing you can do is you can show your MIDI input monitor. If you show the custom view up here, this right here that says no in, this is your MIDI input monitor. So if I play a note, it shows the name of that note and the octave, so D sharp three. The one is the MIDI channel that it's on, uh, and the icon is the type of MIDI message it is. That's a note on message. And then the last number is its velocity. That's essentially how hard or fast you've hit the key. So this is a number between zero and 127. Now I could just arm this track and hit R and record right now, but what I wanna do is I wanna layer up a couple software instruments and play them like one instrument as like a one unit or one ensemble. So let's pull up a couple other instruments. The first one I'm gonna pull up is the ES2 synthesizer. Pull this up and let's choose some synth strings. I'll go under synth strings. Let's use this cosmic strings bright.
and maybe I don't want the release time on this to, to tail off um, so slowly. I'm gonna pull the release time down here in envelope three. This will shorten that. And I'm also gonna pull down this uh, filter, the cutoff frequency for this filter to make it so it's not so bright. And one of the things that we'll talk about throughout this course is synthesis and synthesizer. So by the time we're done with this course, you'll understand what all of this uh, means. But just for now, for demonstration, that's what those two do. Um, let's add a third instrument. Let's add alchemy here. And in alchemy, let's try to find some sort of like an arpeggiated uh, pattern. Let's try this one that says 1970s analog arpeggio. Cool. So now what I can do to put these in a layer, to layer these together, is you can use track stacks to do this. So after selecting all three of them, you go up to track, create track stack, or press shift command D. And then you can choose either a folder stack or a summing stack. I'm gonna choose a summing stack. And I'll just double click on this. I'll call this synth group one. So now instead of recording MIDI on these individual tracks, you can actually do it on the enclosing folder. So if I arm just the enclosing folder and play notes, you'll hear all three of these at the same time. So that's pretty cool. You can treat multiple instruments as one unit, as one single layered instrument. So I want a bit less of those strings, and maybe I want to add some reverb to those strings. I'll go down to reverb, chroma verb, and let me pull up the synth hall preset. Let's see what that sounds like. And maybe what I'll do is pull up the decay time a bit, pull the dry down and pull the wet up. Cool. For my arpeggiator in Alchemy, the notes are kind of low. One way to do this is to bump them up an octave with the MIDI effects plugin. So right here where it says MIDI effects, I'll click on this and I'll go down to the transposer and I'll transpose this up 12 semitones. 12 semitones is the same thing as 12 half steps and this is the same as one octave. So now when I go back and play these as a group, And now all I have to do is press R to record with my MIDI controller. And there you go, as you can see, the MIDI data is saved on the actual enclosing folder of my summing stack rather than on the individual instruments. And if I play this back, it plays back all three of these instruments. Now, if you don't have a MIDI keyboard controller, I highly recommend that you get one, especially if you want to work in electronic music and you like to create and produce electronic music. It's going to be in, extremely valuable to you, even if you get a cheap one. They make cheap ones that are like 25 key. They're small, little cheap tabletop ones. I think some of them are under $100. So it's really worth getting. But in a pinch, if you don't have a MIDI controller, you can press Command K, and this will pull up your musical typing keyboard, and you can use your typing keyboard to en enter in your MIDI notes. <laughs> But it's not nearly as intuitive as having a real life keyboard in front of you. So that's there. Again, you can press Command K to toggle this. All right, guys, so that's the basics of setting up software instruments in Logic and layering those software instruments with track stacks. In the next video, I'll do a review of the piano roll editor and the piano roll editing tools, as well as a MIDI input feature that'll make recording a lot easier called step input. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.